and they have a download for aggregation, aggregated courses, and also they have segmented the donated courses by typical department of the schools. And in an aggregated ranking, at that time, always Michael Sandel was within top 10. And in this particular slide, which was taken about four or five years ago, he was ranked as a four. Now, based on his popularity in iTunes U course, NHK, which is the BBC equivalent TV station in Japan, spotted him and paid a huge amount of money to Michael Sando and also to Harvard University to televise his courses in Japan. His DVD became quite popular in Japan. His books were translated from English to Japanese. Nikkei started inviting him as a keynote speaker of many of the events which were held by Nikkei to have him in Japan, I assume you have to pay minimum $50,000, I assume. Minimum $50,000. So <clears throat> the question is, you know, for him and also Harvard, was it a, was it a good idea to open source his courses? Obviously, if he didn't open source his courses, most likely, only his income was a money from Harvard. He may have several consulting activities, but not really up to this magnitude, right? Harvard, they always pick the maybe 10 or 15 percent as sort of the commission uh, of being the Harvard. So he has to pay to Harvard as well. Well, fee on free business model works well for him. Oh, yeah. And competition of contribution worked well for him, Harvard. Oh, yeah. Right? Apple, what the benefit? The Apple distribute iTunes U for free of charge. And you can see iTunes U courses even based on Windows-based PC. But like iPad or iPhone-like devices, only devices which are supplied by Apple you can appreciate this course. So it's a fee on free. Steve Jobs collected all of these courses and distributed to the world for free of charge. And he get a large chunk of revenue out of these courses. It's a fee on free based business model. This is a Business Week equivalent Japanese business magazine. And this is the cover story of 2011, and it says, power of Nintendo, can 3DS sales exceed smartphone in Japan? As I said, this is the 11, right? 2011. 2011, October 28th, Nintendo is losing money for the first time. So obviously, he didn't exceed the power of a smartphone but he is uh, losing a lot of money now. And now Sony Computer Entertainment lost a lot of money based on PlayStation, which is both Nintendo PS. You buy software, right, game software from the vendor, and you use it. The world of game uh, industry is changing. That they they distribute game software for free of charge. And within the game, you buy special power to kill the enemy or to jump the very high fence or something like that. So the revenue business model changed from selling software to fee on free. And this one is a Sony. Uh, Again, again, Nikkei, Sony Computer Entertainment considering free download and item charge for iPhone, I mean, so smartphone game software. They are very slow, very slow. The reason is Sony grew based on patent, based on IP-based business model. And they couldn't just understand 
the new paradigm shift based on open source movement. Number four, business model. In case of open source, vendors can set the level of services, level of, sub of services, services in any way they want. In case of Windows, even IBM is restricted because they do not know what the inside is. Do you know the warranty terms of the Microsoft, let's say for Windows? Have you ever checked the what kind of warranty services Microsoft provides to Windows, PowerPoint, Linux, uh, PowerPoint, Excel, all of these software they do, they sell? They say they warranty the software for 60 days after you purchase. In some countries, they say 90 days. The, what they guarantee is that the Windows will function as it is written in their manuals. They don't say they will solve your problem. Windows will be guaranteed to function in the way they describe in the manuals. The support, their services provided in a way that the Microsoft IT professionals will provide according to the document they have. And they don't say they provide services to solve your problem. And this is not unique to Microsoft. That is applicable to Oracle, all, so to speak, shrink, shrink, uh, rack, shrink pack software package companies. Software companies provide a similar warranty restrictions. Therefore, even IBM is restricted. If IBM sells the computer system to, let's say, bank based on Windows, then obviously IT office or bank will ask IBM what kind of warranty you will provide. Then IBM will say that the, all of the application programs which IBM developed, we can provide you any kind of services you want, providing you pay fee money for us. But they will say always, but as far as Windows is concerned, we cannot provide you the services as our application programs because we do not know the inside of Windows. So upper limit is what Microsoft says over internet. <clears throat> now, in case of Linux, IBM can provide any kind of services you want because they have capability to analyze all of the Linux, and they can fix any problem you might encounter. Obviously, it's for fee, and that is the money where IBM makes money. And IBM is quite aggressive in pushing Linux. How many of you that you know the company called Red Hat? Okay, so Red Hat makes money out of their service products. Red Hat didn't invent Linux you know, when Red Hat was developed. Linux was already widely used in the United States. And they said, we certified Linux, and we called it as a Red Hat Enterprise, Enterprise Linux, and we will provide you any kind of services you want, providing you will pay money for it. So that's the business model of Red Hat. In case of users, if you, happen to have, if you happen to have a few really good top-notch Linux engineers who graduated from Wichita State University, hopefully, then you can maintain the whole thing without having any support from other companies, right? And also, there are many secondary backup support companies in the open source domain, and you can hire these companies and also there are strong community support is available in open source domain. And unless you use the power of community, you feel community kind of shaky, not reliable, all of that. But in case of well-managed open source software, the community support is quite reliable and quite quick to respond to your request. Now, based on the combination of what I said so far, 
by using the open source software, you can build very high cost of performance systems. In case of Oracle, I don't know what the price of their licensing fee is, but in Japan, for one license, Enterprise Oracle is $50,000. And the first year, they charge you 20% of that as a maintenance fee. And after that, they jack up the price by 2% every year. And large corporations, usually they have a few hundred or a few thousand databases. So licensing fee alone becomes a huge amount. If you use open source database, such as PostgreSQL or MySQL, licensing fee is a zero. <laughs> it's a big difference. If you have a technical strength, you can do anything in open source software, which is not possible in the case of a closed source software. That is the reason why all of these companies use open source, not only in an operating system, but in an even database, because they know they have a talent, poor people who can modify Linux and database in a way they want. And the ideal thing is to develop IT professional from Wichita State University who can do this kind of things. You know, that's the ideal situation. Well, I have only 15 minutes to, to uh, finish, so I will go to conclusion. <clears throat> Again, Business Week, the fall of an, uh, of an American icon. Looks like this is the cover when Steve Jobs passed away. But that is not the case, you know, it's 1996. This is the time when Steve Jobs was kicked out from Apple by the person, his name is Scully. And Steve Jobs hired Scully from PepsiCo. Then uh, Steve Jobs uh, did many things, including acquisition of uh, Pixar, which is an animation company. And he developed many skill set in open source domain as well. And as you know, after he returned to Apple, he made Apple the world most valuable company from a stock price point of view in the world, uh, in the United States, I mean, in the United States. The key to that success was he used open source movement to develop, accumulate the IAPS in a very short term, term without paying any money. He collected iTunes U courses based on open source movement. Many of you might think Safari is closed source. Safari is the browser which Apple used. But the key component of Safari is WebKit, which Apple open sourced, Steve Jobs open sourced. WebKit is used even in Internet Explorer. There are many companies which use WebKit. They're a large community. So what Steve Jobs did was he appointed a one person, maybe, who has soft power to coordinate all of non-Apple IT professionals to improve the WebKit. And by doing so, Safari became more powerful. <laughs> so it's a quite smart person, right, he did. iOS, many people think iOS is a closed source, Unix-like operating system. That's true. But the, one of the important pieces of iOS is called Darwin. Again, Steve Jobs open sourced Darwin. And again, based on open source, I mean soft power, he used outside non-Apple people to improve Darwin, to improve iOS. So it's a very powerful tool which Steve Jobs used to recover Apple. This gentleman, his name is John Aker. Uh, he was the sales rep, a uh, very successful IBM sales rep. He played a lot of golf as a sales manager. He's a little Santa in here. And he became the president and the 
uh, uh, Business Week said IBM, led by a new CEO, it aims top 185 billion in sales by 1994, making it the world's biggest computer company and many other things. But three years ago, uh, three years later, his santan went away. His skin became pale. And this says, just as John Aker became chairman three years ago, the computer giant went into its worst profit slide. Now his plan to rejuvenate the company is in place. Will it, will it work? And it didn't work. Therefore, board members kicked him out. Then he invited a person whose name is Lou Gossner. And he was the chairman of Navisco. He was the chairman of American Express. He was a partner of McKenzie uh, Consulting Company. And what he did was he put all of the IBM closed operating systems, there were about 15 of them, put in a shelf. And he switched to Linux very quickly. And I think he could he did it because he came from outside. You know, if he were kind of escalated from uh, within IBM, I don't think he could make that kind of decision. But since he came from outside, he said, just put all of these IBM closed source operating systems in the shelf and switch to Linux quickly. Not only that, he said, we should ask or we should coordinate other IT companies in Japan, in the United States, in Europe, so that they, they, all of them will support Linux. He didn't use the term called soft power, but in essence, what he did was he used soft power so that the other American companies, other Japanese IT companies, European, European companies use Linux. And that became true. There were several exceptions, but that came true. And as I said, in an open source movement, largest contributor get the largest return. Now IBM generate the largest revenue and profit out of Linux-related system integration services. Do you know this person? Scott McNeely. I assume WSU has the Sun Micro Systems hardware and software. But this gentleman, his name is Scott McNeely. He was the founder of Sun Micro, which was the largest company in the field of Unix. All right. Their software was called Solaris. And in 1996, this company is really skyrocketing. So Sun Rise and Scott McNeely. Six months later, the cover became black and white. And will Sun rise again? He didn't. He didn't. And he tried to sell his company to IBM. IBM declined. And Oracle acquired. Therefore, now Oracle owns the uh, Sun and the Oracle market, Spark and Solaris. The reason why he faced this challenge was Sun was the last company which said, we will accommodate Linux. Not only that, we will open source our closed source Unix-based software called Solaris. And we will call it Open Solaris. But due to lack of soft power, he didn't get the community support, and he failed. And that's the end of his life in Sun Micro. Now, I saw him in Japan, and he is in open source activities of distributing many courseware of the schools, mainly up to high school, not to the university. And so it's amazing that the gentleman who grew the company based on closed source, now he is in open source domain. This person, whom I respect, he was a founder of Digital Equipping Corporation. He grew DEC to the world's second largest computer company next to IBM. Unix was developed, as I said, at the Bell Lab using DEC computers. 
ARPANET, most of the nodes were based on DEC computers. So he supposed to know, and also many of the vice president of DEC supposed to know the power of Unix and the Linux. But their success was closed source operating system such as VAX VMS and couldn't see